Hey everyone, I have a new series of videos starting today. I am going to be covering the basics on Scratch programming, what it is, how it works, and how to program in Scratch. Um, the idea of this is to start from the beginning, get you guys started with the basics, and work through a variety of items to help hone the skills and to take a deeper dive into the learning process. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can follow along through this whole entire video series. Let's get going. So what exactly is Scratch programming, you might ask? Well, it's a block-based programming language that was created to help and it was created to help introduce the art of programming and allows its users to create interactive programs and games and such. Uh, it, it does provide a great tool for users to step into programming who might not have programmed it before. It was specifically designed for ages, I think, 8 to 16, but it's really a great program for any age group that hasn't programmed before. And it was created by the Lifelong Kindergarten Group located at the MIT uh, Media Lab. Uh, the best part about it is it's free for us. And, you know, it, it really provides a, a stepping stone to get into coding. But enough with the history of the program itself. Let's actually get into the actual coding part. I will link the URL below in the description on how to get to the Scratch website that I'm on now that you can see. But and I also do, before we get started here, you can see here, I do recommend to, uh, joining Scratch, creating a, a profile in here, setting up your username. Because when you do that, you can actually save your programs and come back to them later. And you can also share your programs out, as you see here, with the community here. So it, it's really a community-driven base. So you share it out, comment back, look at other examples and whatnot. It's really a great community that they've created here. But once you get signed in, we can go ahead and hit the create button and it's going to take us into the Scratch programming itself. And once it loads here, you're going to see your workspace here. And it's really broken down into different sections. You're going to have your actual working program here up on top left here. You have your sprite window here, your coding blocks here in the center. This is going to be your coding area over here, the big gray space. And they do actually give you a tip section over here to help guide you through this that you can leave there you can close it if you want I'm going to just leave it open but this can be a really good tool when you're doing this on your own to figure out what you want to make but we're going to be concentrating mainly on this coding block section the sprite section today and with the future videos and these coding blocks this these are your main beef of your program what we're doing and they, they break them down into different sections here categories they have motion, look, sound, pen, data, events, control, sensing, operators, and then kind of the miscellaneous blocks that didn't fit in the other categories. And we will take a deeper dive into all of these as the series progresses. But today, I think we're going to be mainly looking at the motion blocks and the control type blocks, because those are two of the main blocks when you're getting started with programming. So when we're looking at these blocks, the control blocks here, um, I'm going to try to see what do they actually control uh, and that is really a good question we're getting started we're going to use these blocks over here to control our sprites and then you're going to be what exactly is a sprite well this little cat here um, I believe his name scratchy is your default sprite when you open a new, new program a sprite is basically your characters or objects that you're going to be controlling in your program and as we progress we're going to get into new sprites you add multiple sprites you can create your own sprites sprites actually have costumes where it actually breaks down different aspects if you see now he's running so it gives a whole nother dynamic i don't want to get into that yet because i want to stick to the basics here in the beginning so let's just we're going to use scratchy here and you see he's on a backdrop and the first Thing I want to get into with dealing with motion with our sprites is you have to understand how motion works in your program. You have to understand how you go make the sprite go from point A to point B and how that functionality works. And the best way for us to understand that is to add a backdrop that shows how the, the moving of these sprites work. They're running on an X and Y axis, similar to geometry and graphing. So the first thing I want us to do is go down into this backdrop section and I want us to pick a backdrop from the library. 
Now you're going to see the library open up and there's a bunch of default backdrops you can set for your program. And they do do a good job here of setting the categories here by themes to help you kind of find what you want to look for. You can also do a search here. But all I want to do, we're going to scroll down to the bottom here and you're going to see an XY grid on the bottom here. There's a couple different grids, but I want this XY dash grid. So you go, you're going to select it. You're going to know it's selected when it has a blue box around it and it's shaded gray. And you're going to click OK. So now you see the XY grid on the backdrop. Now you're going to understand how exactly, in this case, Scratchy is going to move in our program space. And as you something to notice here when I move my mouse around in the bottom right hand side here it's actually changing coordinates to kind of help you out there's a couple different ways when we move our sprites that we'll get into that you know what to do but we'll get to that point just understand this is how we are going to control our sprites so we're going to go back over here go into the scripts tab again to get back to our coding blocks and if you notice, when I click on motion, no motion blocks is opening. This is a good good understanding of this program. It is because I am still selected on the stages here. We, we need to click back onto our sprite number one. And then you're going to see our coding blocks that control that sprite show back up. So that is how Scratch works. You program each individual item separately. and each So they're all independent of each other. So first we're going to go into this motion blocks and we're going to pick the move block which is right here. You're going to want to left click on it, hold it down and drag it over there. So now we're going to see how our programming space on this right side is going to work. And as you can see they, these blocks look like puzzle pieces. And as you can figure puzzle pieces fit together. So all these blocks are going to fit together so you can see the step process that's going to happen when your program actually runs. And as we learn more this will make more sense and, and we'll see the purpose of these individual pieces fitting together good. Because the way is we put this move block here and we want this action to occur. The main basic way to start a program is by clicking this green arrow or go flag or you could double click on this as well. If I double clicked on this you're going to see one my red stop sign lit up and two scratchy moved 10 steps. So if we click it again, he moves 10 steps. Now to give you a better understanding of what we're going to do, there are variables inside of this blocks for the move. You can actually adjust this to whatever amount of steps you want your sprite to move. So I would moved it to 100, and now you can see he moved 100 based on this XY coordinate. So that's 10 zoning moving 1 tenth of that first line, etc. Now this is not the best way to have a sprite move because as you can see, he does jump around. Um, if I put this guy back over here, he jumps around a lot that way. It doesn't look like he's walking. So we're going to we're going to put use a different motion block here to make our sprite move. In the end, what we're going to accomplish is I want Scratchy to move to every quadrant of the grid on our space. So I want him to go to the top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this block. To get rid of the block, you can just right click on it and hit delete and it goes away and that's simple. So now we're going to pick a different motion to use. We're going to actually pick the, the um, go to option. Now there are a couple different go to options here. There's one that goes to a specific point here. I actually clicked it. Uh, random position or mouse pointer. We're not going to use that one. We're actually going to use a go to with the coordinates and you see the 1020 here. Now it's important to know if you watch these coordinates if I move our sprite around, these actually adjust to where our sprite is. So what you could do with this kind of item here is when we have Scratchy sitting here in the middle and we want him to go top right, if we move him there, it will give us the coordinates. And if we grab this, it's going to hold those coordinates there. So we can move him back to the middle. These coordinates now stay the same. So when we run the program, it actually jumps to that position without having to go and figure this out but you can still see that he's jumping to that position we don't want that we want him to walk so I'm gonna again delete this and try to figure out how I can get him to walk like that so 
I'm going to use the glide motion. And just as it sounds, he's going to glide. Now, as you can see, I, I picked it with the coordinates here, so he's not going to glide. So I'm going to delete this real fast. I'm going to again move him to where I want him to go. You're going to see the coordinates change in this motion block. I'm going to pull that over, and it holds it. I'm going to move him back to the middle. I'm going to run it and now he glides over there. So it kind of looks like he's walking over there. He's not just jumping. So as you can see, it took him exactly one second to get up there. We can play with this number and make it like 0.5 seconds. Move him back, do it again, you see he moves faster. So I'm gonna leave it at 0.5. I think that's a good speed right now. So now we want him to go to each one of these quadrants. So what we can do is just grab another glide block, bring it over, and slide in that puzzle piece. You can see how it turns white there and connect it. Pull another one, pull another one. But you can see we're at these coordinates. If I run this right now, it actually jumped there and jumped back. I don't want that. I actually want to jump back at the end. So I'm going to pull this away. Now, if I run this, you're going to notice it only runs this one because they're not connected now. That's important to remember when you're making the programs. It's only going to run the certain ones um, together that are connected. That's the whole point of that puzzle piece. Now we can later add stuff so when the, something's clicked it will run whatever is specified. But again, we'll get, get into that later in the series. So next we want to move this guy over here. We want to grab another glide. As you can see, now he's at negative 30 on this grid and 108. So you should start seeing how this actually flow works with moving with these numbers. We can add that below there. Now, if we take it back to the center here, using this block, we can hit this, it goes up and it goes over. Exactly what we want. We can move them down here. You see the coordinates change again, attach it, move them to the right, attach it. Let's move them back to the center. And let's test this out. And now he's going to all four quadrants. Now, if you want him to walk back to the center, we can take this bottom, put it back up top here. And if we run it, he's going to go up top, back, down, and around, and back to the middle. So now every time, it's going to go in that direction. So another quick thing we can do in this section, we can actually get this thing looping so it keeps walking through this so you can see it working. If you go over to the uh, control, you know, this is where it's controlling blocks. You're going to see wait, repeat forever. There's if statements in there. We'll get more into that. We're just going to pick the forever loop. Now this is a little different piece you can see here. So it's still a puzzle piece, but this is where we can slide our entire blocks into this puzzle piece and it's encompassing everything. So this is where we start making basically functions in our program using block based coding. So now if we run this, it's going to continue to run this over and over and over. Now we could take a repeat and have it only repeat this 10 times or whatnot, but for the sake of argument in this lesson, that's what I wanted to do. So go ahead and go through these motion blocks. Uh, you can dive into the control blocks a little bit as well. Get a good feel of how our sprites move around this board, how we can make them glide, you can point in directions. All these kind of give good description so you should be able to figure it out you can set individual x y coordinates for them and gliding and moving it all depends what we're making and if we want them to glide move go to etc so go ahead go over what we did go through this process and the next session would take this a step farther we may even work on drawing something adding different sprites drawing our own sprites etc let me know what you would like to see in future episodes for scratch programming and i'll try to incorporate it into a, a video here let me know anything else you would like to see as far as this goes and uh don't forget to hit that like button subscribe so you keep up to date with these and i look forward to seeing you in the next video